A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hey! Transcontinental was a powerful company operating stagecoaches on a route that led over the shelf-like road along the side of Coffin Mountain. Yeah. The stage was traveling late. There were no passengers, and Lefty Winton was glad of it because the heavy rain made Coffin Mountain a hazardous part of the journey. Both he and the guard were soaked to the skin. And what's more, Lefty? Jack Prindle is on the level. I admit all that, Joe. Prindle may be on the level... He can't afford to pay what Transcontinental pays for guards and drivers. Uh, he's got nothing but a little feeder line operating into Wellsville. Well, maybe he can't pay as much as Bert Bragging. He wouldn't work a man as hard. What's more, if his outfit throws, the men who work for him will grow with it. Yeah, but don't you see, Joe? Prindle can't grow. Nobody will bother him as long as he operates that one horse line into Wellsville. But let him show any signs of growing... Transcontinental will put them out of business fast. I don't see how Bracken can do it. Ah, uh, Bracken can find plenty of ways to hurt a man. Uh, listen to that thunder. Hey, Joe, look up yonder. Rocks, they're coming down. It's a landslide. Ho! Ho there! Ho! Lefty! Ho! Those rocks are coming right yeah. at us. Ho! We'll be hit. Yeah. We can't get away. Jump! Jump on, Joe. Get out of the stage. <laughs> get under the stage. We can't get back. Get under the stage. I gotta cut the horse. After the storm, two men rode through the soaked valley toward the shelf-like trail around the side of Coffin Mountain. It was the Lone Ranger and Tonto on their way from the Padre Silver Mine. They saw the ruins of the stage at the bottom of the hill and reined up. Oh, sir, let's go. Easy, fella. Easy, big fella. Oh, fella. Stage swept off trail. Easy, big fella. Look at the trail, Tonto. It's gone. It's completely gone. Ah, it's died under landslide. Oh, oh, oh. Tonto, did you hear that? Huh? That man groaning. Seems to be over there. Him under the wreck of stage. Come on, we'll see what we can do. Ah. Where are you? Him over there. 
Yeah, we'll get you. The stagecoach is nothing but killing wood. That's right. I'll have you out of there in just a minute. Here, here, boy. That's not the one. This him dead. Here's the man we heard. I'm pinned under. I'll see if I can lift this tunnel. Uh-huh. You pull him out, but be careful of it. He's coming. There. What, what about Lefty? Get him out. He's in there, too. We'll get him out, but there's nothing we can do for him. You mean Lefty's dead? Yes. You, you're masked. Do you object to being helped by a masked man? No. No, uh, no offense meant, mister. Oh, oh, I reckon my leg is busted. And just lie still. We'll see what we can do for you. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto did what they could for the injured guard... They learned a lot about Bert Bracken, the operator of the transcontinental stage line, and his ruthless methods. They also heard about Jack Prindle, the energetic young owner of a small feeder line that came into the town of Wellsville. Soon after news of the landslide reached the town, Bracken called on Prindle in his small office. Prindle, you're a fool. You can't fight the transcontinental. Maybe I can't, Mr. Bracken. And maybe I am a fool to try, but... By thunder, I'm going to try. Can't you get it through your head that Transcontinental's got the franchise to carry mail? I know that. I'm not interfering with your franchise to carry mail along the Coffin Mountain route. But I've been promised a franchise to take the mail from here to Gold Flats. You haven't got that franchise yet. It's been promised to me as long as I get service started from here to the Flats. And it's to be an exclusive franchise. Mm. Now, look, Prindle. You know the position I'm in with the Coffin Mountain Trail swept out. I've got to operate through Gold Flats. Not if I've got the exclusive franchise. Well, we can make a deal, can't we? Like fun, we can. I've never liked you, Bracken. I never liked the way you operate. You found you couldn't come in here and bulldoze me, so now you're trying to get friendly. Why, you little... If you want to operate transcontinental, you just stick to your own trade. It's gone. And rebuild it. About time you spent some money. I'll tell you what I'll do, Prindle. I'll buy you out. Like fun, you will. $5,000. (laughs) $5,000. All right, name your own price. <laughs> there is no price. Prindle line isn't for sale. <laughs> Prindle line. Four stove-in horses and an old cast-off Butterfield that's ready to fall apart. That stove-in outfit will get the mail to Gold Flats just the same. And that's more than Transcontinental can do. Yeah, we'll see about that. You bet we'll see. you got to run a stage through by the first of the month to get that franchise. Don't forget that. And I'll do it. Need a mighty good driver. I've got a driver and I've got horses. Oh. Now get out of my office. I've got work to do. If you don't get your franchise, you'll be mighty glad to sell out to me. When that time comes, $5,000 will look like an awful lot of money. Good day. How'd you make out with a young upstart, boy? I didn't. Stubborn as a Missouri mule. Well, what are you going to do? How do I know what I'll do? What are you hanging around here for anyway, Steve? Well, what else is there for me to do? I went to the stable, ready to set out on my run. Found there was no need for a driver, because the stage couldn't get through. What are we going to do? I don't know yet, but we're going to do something. What about the mail? That's got to go through. It's to go through on the Prindle stage. He should take it as far as Gold Flats. Our line will pick it up from there and take it west. Worst of it is, if he makes good on the trail run on the first of the month, he'll get the franchise permanent. If that happens, boss, he'll cut into us, won't he? That won't happen. Listen, Steve, you know Prindle's drivers, don't you? Sure. I know both of them. I know all the stage drivers around here. Hire them. Uh, Huh? I said hire them. Sign them up. They're to work for me. I don't care how much you have to pay them, but hire them on a contract. (laughs) I begin to savvy, boss. But maybe young Prindle will try to drive himself. You take care of the drivers. I'll take care of Prindle's horses. His horses? He won't put a stage through the gold flats without a team. Hey, boss. That redskin's looking over this way. Huh? Uh Hey, you. What do you want? Oh, me look for a fella named Bracken. I wonder if he heard us talking. Are you uh, Bracken? That's my name. 
One of it. Oh, me come tell you, stage caught in landslide. One of my stage coaches? Ah. Great day. That must have been Lefty Winton six in hand. He must have been ahead of schedule if he was trapped in a landslide. Where is the stage? It's at bottom of mountain and valley. Driver dead, guard hurt, horses caught. Where's the guard now? Him in valley, splint on leg. Him in shelter. You go get him? Yeah, I'll send men out to get him. Ah, uh, me go tell him. Me tell him, friend come. I didn't hear that critter come up. Neither did I. Do you suppose he heard us talking about plans connected with Jack Prindle? I don't know. That nah, doesn't make any difference. He's just an ignorant redskin. The Lone Ranger was in a small lean-to made by himself and Tonto to shelter the man with the broken leg. The guard was resting comfortably and had acquired a lot of confidence in the masked man who had helped him. Masked or not, mister, you rate ace high with me. Fact is, I owe my life to you and your Indian friend. Here comes Toto, Joe. Uh, I suppose you'll have to skedaddle as soon as Bracken sends men to get me. We'll see. Toto's pushing his horse pretty hard. Uh, you and the Redskins sure have a couple of fine horses. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. What's the news, Toto? Me, me got plenty news. Did you talk to Bracken? Uh, uh, what did he say? Is he going to send for me? Uh, him send men to get you. And send other men to do other things. What do you mean, Toto? Well, he make plenty of trouble for young fella. You're not talking about Jack Prindle. That's right. Now, hold on. Bracken can't make trouble for that young fella. He's as independent as they come and smart as a new whip. Well, me hear him talk with a fella named Steve. Who's he? He's one of the drivers for the transcontinental line. Him hire all driver. Prindle not have any driver. That's an ornery cussed trick. Why does he want to do that? Prindle's outfit don't interfere with transcontinental? They interfere plenty now. You know a lot, Tonto. Suppose you come into the lean-to and tell us about it. Ah, me tell about it. Good. Darkness gathered while Tonto talked, and under the cover of night, men crawled close to the little stable where Jack Prindle kept his horses. Neither Jack Prindle nor his old stable man was aware of the danger that was near at hand. You'll take particular good care of the horses from now until we start out, won't you, Baldy? Uh, you can count on me, Jack. By thunder, I'm going to feed up them animals so they'll be able to go from here to Gold Flats like nothing. There's only one thing. What's that? Four horses ain't many. That old stage is a plenty heavy. And she'll be a heap heavier with all the mail that's going to pile up now that the transcontinental route is closed. Oh, if you could only get a couple of more horses. Afraid I can't, Baldy. Yeah. There's not a good horse to be had around here. Bracken seen to that. And if there was, I couldn't buy him. I've got no cash left, and... I'm in debt as far as my credit will stretch. Well, we'll do the best we can. These horses will take the stage through, won't they? Why, <laughs> sure they will, son. Don't you worry none about it. <laughs> well, I, I'll shove one for home. Be sure you close the door. Sir, leave it to me. All right, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. hey, hey look. Stand aside. Don't make a shoot you. We're after your horses. Dear master, it's a robbery. Why, get you back and we'll let you have it. You two get the horses. We'll take care of these galoots. Come on, boys. Come on. Here's the critters over here. What's the idea? You can't get away with this. Get back there and shut up. I won't. And neither will I. Hold hey, up. let me go. Let me go. I tell you. Don't get him, Bully. No, you don't. Hey, oh. Oh. Leave them horses alone. Jackson. Who oh, are you dirty, ornery skunks? Hitting him with a gun barrel. Let me go. I'll show you. Shut up. I'll do it. Oh. That takes care of both of them. You got the horses? Yeah. Well, come on. Let's get out of here. Ready there. Get up there. Get up there. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank you.
Now to continue our story. From Tonto, the Lone Ranger heard enough to realize that Bert Bracken would go a long way to keep Jack Prindle from winning the exclusive franchise to carry mail from Wellsville to Gold Flats. The masked man rode to warn the ambitious young stagecoach operator. The door of Prindle's stables were wide open. Hey, big fellow. Stay right here, Silver. Let's see if anyone's inside. The moon shone bright on the masked man's face as he approached the dark stable. Suddenly, a gun barked. Hold it. Hold your fire. Get away. What's the matter? Get away. I... I'll fire it. Oh. Sounds as if you've been hurt. Get... Let me be. You've done enough. I'll take it easy. I'm not here to hurt you. Wait. I'll take you out of the little light. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'd have got you if my my head wasn't whirling so. Are you Jack Prindle? Uh, you ought to know. Your gun whipped me. Is that what happened to you? Oh, oh, my head. Prindle, I just came into town. I came here to warn you that Bert Bracken plans to hire all the drivers and do something about your horses so you can't get a stage through to Gold Flats. You, you came to warn me? Yes, but I seem to have gotten here too late. I... How did you know? My friend heard plans when he came here to report that the guard in one of the transcontinental coaches was in our camp with a broken leg. Hey, Jack! Jack! Where in tarnation are you? Baldy, here. Jack, the horses are gone. Them poor cats took the horses. What the... Who's this? It's all right, Baldy. I'm not one of the men who took your horses. Mashed. By a juniper, you I, ain't... Uh, I guess it's all right, Baldy. This man doesn't talk like one of Bracken's outfits. What did they do to you, Baldy? They whooped me on the head, but that's nothing. The thing that counts is that our horses are gone. Well, I'll see what I can do. We'll meet again. Steady, you did me follow. Come on, Silver! following morning, Jack Prindle and his old friend Baldy were at breakfast in the small house they shared. Uh, hmm. uh, come on, son. You got to eat some breakfast. Won't do you no good to starve. No, I, I'm not hungry, Baldy. Uh, bad enough to lose the horses, but uh, I'm Oh, maybe the horses will turn up. <laughs> Fat chance. Uh, drink some coffee. Maybe that'll get you started. Looking through the window there at the livery stable is... Enough to turn anything I eat into poison. <laughs> Sit still, Jack. I don't see who it is. Maybe it's the mass man with some good news. We sure can't have any more bad news. Hi, Baldy. Oh, it's you. What do you want here, Bracken? I'll step in for just a minute, if you don't mind. I do mind. They don't seem to do me much good. I heard you lost some horses last night. <laughs> you probably knew about that robbery before I did. <laughs> well, you wouldn't make a charge you can't prove, would you? What do you want, Bracken? Well, a couple of things. I thought I might as well let you know that there's no need expecting your drivers to show up today. I suppose you've heard them. Yep. I can always use good drivers. If that's all you've got to say, why don't you get out? It's not. I brought a bundle of folding money. Look here. Got $5,000 here, Prindle. You better put it away. It might be tempting to the critters that stole my horses. But then... Maybe you aren't worried about them. This is a nice piece of cash, considering what you've got in the way of equipment. Still want to buy me out, huh? Use your head, Prindle. You're not going to carry any mail to Gold Flats, and you know it. Sell out to me, and I'll see that you get a good job with Transcontinental. Now, doesn't that sound like good sense? Well, I... I don't know. A man with your experience and brains would have a good future with my outfit. $5,000 is a lot of cash. Hey, Jack! Jack, look across the road. Look over there at your stable. What? The horses. The masked man's bringing them in. He found them. He and the Indian are putting them into the stable. <laughs> Great. Now, hold on. Who said I wasn't going to carry mail? Well, you've got no driver. I'll drive myself if need be. Now, get out of the way, Bracken. Wait a minute. I've got work to do. Come on, Baldy. Yeah. Doggone, son. For a minute, I thought you'd sell out. For a minute, I thought I'd have to. Hey, mister, you found the horses. Yes, we found them, Jack. Otto's taking them inside. Gosh, I don't know how I can ever thank you. If you hadn't come up just when you did, I, I might have sold out to Bracken. I'll go inside and see if the horses get fed up. Jack, you can't move a stage with those horses. Who can't? I am sorry. 
The men who took those horses knew exactly what they wanted to do, and they did it. What's the matter? Your horses were driven to the point of exhaustion. You can't use them today or tomorrow. Hey, Jack! Jack, the horses are doggone near stove in. Bracken's smart. Plenty smart. Oh, we're licked, son. We're licked. Jack, uh, you get your stagecoach ready to move. Huh? Huh? What do you mean? Make your plans. I know a man who lives on a ranch not far from here. His name is uh, Thunder Martin. What about him? Well, he has some of the finest mules I've ever seen. And if I know Thunders, I think I do. He'll jump at the chance to take your stage to Gold Flats. Tonto. Uh, here. Wait here for me, Kimasabi. I'm going to get Thunder Martin. See that the leather's ready for Thunder's mules. It'll take at least four strong mules. Thunder Martin will hitch up twice that many steady years, big fella. One silver! mules move that stage. You'll ask to Matt. How about it, Thunder? Why, them there mules could haul the heaviest outfit that's ever been built from here to kingdom come if the right man is driving them. And they could do it through axle deep mud. Jack Prindle has no drivers. Why, doggone it, his drivers couldn't handle my mules anyhow. Now, there ain't but one man alive can talk the right kind of lingo to my floppy galooch, and I'm him. The mail must be in gold flats for the first of the month. And that means midnight. Well, then go tell your friends to get her loaded and clear the way for me and my mules. Hey, wake up, you slick ears, good for nothing old side. Find your sweet out, Parker. Come on. By the time Thunder Martin arrived in town, Jack Prindle's old Butterfield was loaded with mail and ready for the trip. The whole town turned out to watch, and nearly everyone hoped to see Bracken outmaneuvered by his young opponent. I can get them lines, Buckle. We can't stand around here all day. I'm working as fast as I can. Now, now you listen to me, you good-for-nothing triple-twisted hay for the You hey, can't uh, talk to me like that. I won't take such talk. Not even if you are going to help us get to gold flat. Now, get your hackles down, Bobby. Oh. I'm just warming up my mule. Come on, man. A few moments later, with Jack riding as a guard, Thunder Martin took the reins in one hand and a long whip in the other. All right, get going. Get up. The Lone Ranger and Tonto watched Thunder Martin and Jack start out from town, but they didn't see the look of smug satisfaction on the face of Bert Bracken, who had watched the start of the trip from his office window. Before leaving town... They decided to call on the guard who had been brought in with a broken leg. They found him alone in a room he rented above the general store. I'm uh, glad you came. Mighty glad. There's been something on my mind ever since word got around that you were bringing in a mule skinner. Well, what is it, Joe? I'm still working for Bracken, understand? Yes, of course. But just the same, I... Well, if it hadn't been for you, I might be buried alongside Lefty out in that valley. I'm going to tell you what I saw. Oh, what's that? There's a critter named Steve who does a lot of odd jobs for Bracken. Yes? It wouldn't surprise me if he was the one that arranged for the horse-dealing deal last night. Uh, Kimasabi, me told you, me see Bracken talk to Steve. Yeah. Well, a little while ago, I saw them two with their heads together across the street. Yes? Then Steve came into the hardware store right under my room. I see. I put my ear to the floor and heard him buying blasting powder. He went out with it packed in the saddlebag and then set out along the trail to Gold Flats. Blasting powder. There's a bridge about halfway between here and the flats. I know what you're getting at. Come on, Tuttle. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought he'd savvy. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rushed from the building, ran across the street to where their horses had been left at ground hitch, and leaped to the saddle. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. One, two, Get up. Count. With the town behind them, the Lone Ranger and Tonto urged the horses to their greatest speed. Montilver! The mighty Silver pulled ahead by half a length, and then a length, and then increased the lead. (laughs) 
Far ahead, Thunder slapped the reins and cracked the whip with Jack admiringly at his side. All right, get along, you spavin' old flop-eared galooch. Get along or I'll slice hunks of mule steak for this whip. Golly, Thunder, you sure work just as hard as those mules. Where's that bridge you told me about? We're nearly there. That's the halfway mark? Yeah. Well, hang on. We won't slow down for no bridge or nothing else. Thunder, look behind. Someone's coming after us. I don't believe it. No one can catch up to my mules when they're going full speed. But someone is. He's riding a white horse. A white horse? He's gaining fast. It's that friend of yours, the masked man. Well, here's where I show him how my mules can travel. Get up there. Get along. Thunder Mountain's mules fairly flew along the trail, but their speed was nothing compared to that of Silver. The Lone Ranger came alongside. He didn't try to shout a warning above thundering hoofbeats in the clattering stage. He pushed ahead. Boom, boom, boom. At the bridge, the masked man reined up sharply. The Lone Ranger hit the ground running and leaped down the bank to the edge of the stream that was spanned by the bridge. I thought I'd find you here. Now, see here. Hold on a minute. All set to make trouble, weren't you, Steve? Get away from that blasting powder. No, no, wait. Listen, just a minute. You have a lot coming to you. This is just a start. No! Wait, listen. You listen! No! You're going to talk. You're going to tell all about Bracken's schemes. Am I right? I don't know what you mean. Oh, you don't, huh? Oh! Don't hit me again. What about Bracken? I slap you to sleep. Oh, what about Bracken? I, I'll talk. You'll talk where we'll do some good. Come on, Steve. You're going back to town. We'll take the blasting powder with us and let you tell all about it. Now, get into that saddle. Now, look, mister. Give me a chance to explain to you. The saddle, Maybe. Steve, and start for town. Don't hit me again. Get up that bank and do what you're told. Get up. Belong you. The stage is coming. Yes, we'll watch it pass. Get in there, Silver. <laughs> He's over the bridge. Halfway to go, flat ahead of schedule. Your blasting powder can't stop the Prindle stage now. But what you're going to tell the sheriff will stop Bert Bracken. Get going, I'll follow you. Get up, my boy. Ready, big fella. One silver. One silver. One. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 